a short but not sweet, maybe even sort of terrifying, poem from Emily Dickinson. Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for another poetry discussion, which will appear in three separate playlists here on the channel. Number one being the poetry discussion playlist nearing 600 videos strong. Number two being the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist of videos dedicated exclusively to the greatest poet of all time. And number three being Horror Fest 2024, 31 horror-themed videos to celebrate the 31 days of October. 2024. The poem in question is Death is a Dialogue Between, and it reads as such. Death is a dialogue between the spirit and the dust. Dissolve, says death, the spirit. Sir, I have another trust. Death doubts it, argues from the ground. The spirit turns away, just laying off for evidence an overcoat of clay. So one of the things that is so sort of sneakily, insidiously scary or um, frightful or maybe just woeful in this poem is the, the question of how easy is it to die? We have here the idea of death trying to tempt the spirit to die, dust trying to tempt the spirit to die. The idea that it might be something so simple as letting go. This is a theme that pops up time and again in Emily Dickinson, this idea of a narrator who does not know they're dead, this idea of a narrator who wakes up dead, finds themselves dead, did not realize at all that they had died. How easy must that death then be? Is it so simple as falling asleep? Is that all that death is, being so simple as falling asleep? You always hear rescue workers if you've ever seen any video or been in the situation or even seen movies of rescue worker situations, an ambulance shows up on the scene, they grab someone's hand, stay with me, squeeze my hand back. They don't want the individual to pass out. Is staying conscious that powerful a survival tool? Simply passing out could be the end. Doesn't that bring into question the idea of how terrifying is sleep? Something you do probably almost every day. When I was a kid, there was a while there where I was afraid to fall asleep. Because it was, you were so powerless in that time. You are there one moment conscious and thinking about whatever it is that a child thinks about. The next moment, you're waking up eight hours later. You have no idea what happened in the meantime. I've always been someone who doesn't really remember dreams as well. So I think that adds to sort of the horrific experience of lost time. The lost time that people... um report when they think they've been abducted by aliens, right? That was one of the things that really drew me to the paranormal stuff, both on TV and through books, was the idea of being afraid to fall asleep. Who knows what happens while you're asleep? For me, it wasn't even a a struggle with the darkness, right? Kids want a nightlight things like that. For me, it wasn't that. It was just the idea that you're going to conk out and anything could happen to you in those eight hours that you're gone. And you you have no idea until it's halfway through. It's interesting, this claim from Emily Dickinson, that dying could be so simple as fading away could be so simple as just shrugging and turning over the way that you would in bed in order to see the next day. 
There are claims that consciousness itself survives death. But arguments like the one in this poem here seem to make it seem that consciousness can dictate death. The spirit. How are we to take the claim in this poem of the spirit? This assertion, this assertion that the spirit exists. What is the spirit? It's that thing inside of you which decides to be alive. And notice that this is a dialogue between the spirit and dust. This is not an argument between the spirit and other spirits. <clears throat> so, because of that, we're forced to reconcile with what does dust mean. Again, this is not an argument. This is not a dialogue between the spirit alive and spirits past. This is a dialogue between the spirit alive and dust itself. Emily Dickinson was particularly close to the religion of Christianity. Whether she was a Christian or not, I don't know that we know. I think that she struggled with the idea for her entire life. You look at the chronologically dated poems that we have from Emily Dickinson, the chronologically ordered poems that we have from Emily Dickinson, and there seem to be Christian-esque poems scattered about with seemingly anti-religious poems all the way through. But we're certain for example, that she was familiar with the text of the Bible. Genesis 3.19 says that man is made of dust and will return to dust. <clears throat> In this way, this poem seems to be on the surface, if you're stopping at maybe that surface, the poem seems to be a sort of beckoning the spirit to return to dust. Be with your loved ones, the dust says. Return to dust, the dust says. You came from dust, you will return to dust, the dust says. But we do not have the other side of that argument. We have the argument from the dust. We do not have the argument from the loved ones. A lot of times, in my opinion, the sort of anti-religious tones through Emily Dickinson happen in the without. They happen in the things that aren't mentioned. They happen in the things that they, they are, they happen through the things that don't happen. For example, in this poem, the spirit is not confronted with other spirits. Now, this could be a an acceptance of the Old Testament's idea of death. Death is final. Death is darkness. Death is nothingness until everything comes back. But that's more of a Jewish idea, isn't it? That is not the Christian idea, at least as far as I understand. So even that would for Emily Dickinson, be something sacrilegious, something semi-sacrilegious for her station in life. Emily Dickinson seemed to have all sorts of qualms with authority in general, though she was not above admiration. She seemed to have held herself above subjugation. <clears throat> and poems like this where the, the second side of the spirit world simply doesn't exist is another refutation of a type of authority, is another blank spot where were Emily Dickinson to abide by the norms of the time, something should stand, but it does not.
That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. There's poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.